I put forth my sincere thanks to our management of uh, AKCP for accepting wholeheartedly to conduct this 82 International Virtual Learning Series with the blessing of Almighty, our founder, chairman, Kalvi Valal Devatriti Kalasalinga Maya, with the support of our uh, Chairman Dr. K. Sridharan Sir for this 82 International Virtual Learning Series uh, titled on Analytical Parameters in Pharmaceutical Analytical Techniques. In association with the Indian Pharmaceutical Association, South Tamil Nadu Local Branch, Head Office at Arulmigu Kalasalingam College of Pharmacy. Can you hear? Can you hear? Yes. Uh, today, I feel very much honored to welcome our eminent teacher, well-known academician, undisputed researcher, our honorable resource person, Professor Dr. Tara for Dahir, Department of Analytical Chemistry, Faculty of Science and Health, Koya University, Iraq. It is a great pleasure, madam. It is great pleasure for all of us that she could find time to be with us in spite of your busy schedule. Thank you, Dr. Tara, for accepting our invitation and spending your precious time with us. Let me acquaint you with sterling quality of this eminent personality who is a brilliant researcher and teacher. We are uh, fully appreciate you for finding the time to be with us in spite of your busy schedule. So your uh, gracious presence will further enthuse our students. Most welcome, Dr. Tara, madam. Most welcome you, madam. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Next, uh, I welcome and I heartfelt. Uh, I take this opportunity to convey my sincere thanks and special thanks to uh, Doctor Professor Doctor Subhashini Uttarpadi, Madam, for uh, kind arrangement of this 82 International Virtual Learning Series. Thank you so much, Madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam. Welcome, Madam. Most welcome, you, Madam. Thank you, sir. I'm here only. You carry on, sir, yeah. please. Thank you, madam. I welcome all the respected professors, uh, faculty members, and my dear, dear enthusiastic students for today's session. Uh, it is uh, gratifying to note that uh, this session covered a wide range of interesting topics relating to the uh, analytical parameters, different analytical parameters in pharmaceutical techniques. So I hope this session will be a good platform for our students my dear enthusiastic students kindly utilize this great opportunity to explore your knowledge all the very best my dear students once again i welcome you all thank you thank you madam most welcome you madam tara madam you can please you can proceed your presentation madam please thank you very much doctor thank you very much so good afternoon in my time and good evening in your time Dear professors, yeah, yeah of course, I, I, the, the difference is two and a half hour, hour I think, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yes, madam, yes, madam. Yes, so good, after, good evening, dear professors, students, and listeners. So my name is Tara. I am a full-time lecturer at a public university named Koyo University, teaching analytical chemistry. And I got my PhD from University Science Malaysia. So I would like to take this opportunity to, uh, to get my sincere thanks to the organizers of this international virtual learning series of AKCP and also to my dear friend, Dr. Subasini. So before I start my seminar, I would like to give just a brief idea about my university, co-university. So Co-University 
It is a public university, which is in a city named Koya, and this city is near to Erbil city, far from Erbil city, which is the capital of Kurdistan region of Iraq, about 70 kilometer. And for some of you who uh, who are not familiar with the, with the parts of Iraq, in Iraq we have a region in the north of Iraq called Kurdistan region of Iraq, where Kurdish people, they are living there and they are different race from the part of, of other parts of, of Iraq. So even the weather is, is, uh, is different. So in the north, you can see the mountain, you can see cold weather in winter, uh, while in the, uh, in the south, you can see the desert and uh, high temperature. So Koya University was established in the spring of 2003. And according to the national university ranking of Kurdistan region in Iraq, Koya University was ranked as one of the among the five best universities of Kurdistan. My university includes four faculties and two schools, of course, besides the research centers. So includes Faculty of Engineering, Faculty of Science and Health, Faculty of Humanities and Social Science, Faculty of Education, School of Medicine, and School of Physical Education. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, pharmacy and also uh, dentistry. Hopefully, in the near future, we can establish uh, these two uh, departments or colleges as well. So uh, the president of Koya University is Prof. Wali Hamad, and he's a chemist also. Uh, his specialty is physical chemistry. So the outline of my presentation will be about analytical chemistry and pharmaceutical analysis, the parameters of analytical param analytical parameters like sensitivity, selectivity, accuracy, precision, the relation between accuracy and precision, and also how we choose uh, the right analytical technique for our analysis. So before I start my presentation, the first question is why it is important for pharmacy students to know about analytical chemistry and analytical parameters. This question I always uh, keep telling my pharmacy students as I uh, taught them for the couple years uh, in Tishk International University. This is why I met my dear friend Dr. Sobasini and uh, uh, I knew her from there because I work there as a part-time uh, and uh, I taught analytical chemistry and also general chemistry for the pharmacy students. So uh, I noticed that pharmacy students sometimes, I don't know, in my country, they complain why they are taking uh, too much subjects or too much uh, courses about chemistry. And I kept telling them, if you want to be a good pharmacist, you should have a strong background and knowledge about chemistry because chemistry and pharmacy, they are cousins, right? They are cousins. So this is why if you don't know about chemistry, you will not understand pharmacy also. So let us start with analytical chemistry. Analytical chemistry is very important branch of chemistry. This is why pharmacy students, they should pay attention to this course and as well as they should understand it well because they are using it all the time. So analytical chemistry deals with qualitative and quantitative analysis. Therefore, qualitative analysis, it's about identifying the component of a sample, while qualitative analysis is Sorry, qualitative analysis is about identifying the components of a sample. The second one is quantitative analysis. So the quantitative analysis is determining the concentration of the analyte. So in order to understand 
how the qualitative analysis and the quantitative analysis can be done, we have to know the analytical parameters. So what is pharmaceutical analysis? I don't know, in, in uh, Tishik University, um, uh, they, they took it as a, an elective course. I'm not sure about the Indian un universities, how they are taking pharmaceutical analysis. But from my point of view, pharmaceutical analysis is very important subject to be taught in pharmacy college. So pharmaceutical analysis is a branch of practical chemistry that involves a series of process for identification, determination, quantification, purification of substance, separation of components or mixtures, and also determination of the structure of chemical compounds. So the substance may be a single compound, a pharmaceutical compound, maybe a single compound or a mixture of compounds in any dosage form. And also the substance that being used in pharmaceutical analysis may be uh, come from animals, plants, microorganisms, minerals, and various synthetic products. So first of all, you should know what are the scales of sample analysis, because we have different scales. That is meaning we have different size of sample. So the highest one is macro. So macro, is from 0.1 gram or more above 0.1 gram. Semi-micro is between 0.01 to 0.1 gram, while micro scale is between 0.001 gram to 0.01 gram. We have also the sub-micro is between 0.001 gram to 0.001 gram. The ultra micro is below 10 to minus 4 gram, while the trace analysis is between 100 to 10,000 ppm. And usually most of the analysis that being used for pharmaceutical analysis is in the scale of either ultra micro or trace analysis because the rest are bigger size of samples. So what are the important analytical parameters that you have to understand it in order to choose the correct and the right technique for your analysis? We have four main important analytical parameters, sensitivity, selectivity, accuracy, and precision. So if you want to know which method, which analytical technique you have to use for your analysis, you should understand these four main parameters. So let us come one by one and talk about them. What is sensitivity? Of course, when we say sensitivity, it is we can define it as the minimum detectable concentration of the analyte. And of course, we have sensitivity for a method and we have sensitivity for the instrument as well. So they are different. Later, I will talk about this. So in order to measure the sensitivity in general, we have LOD, which is the lower limit of detection. So LOD is the lowest quantity of a substance that can be distinguished from the blank solution. Therefore, you can see from the graph that the limit of detection is somehow near the blank reading, the blank signal. It is, it is not blank actually, but it is near to blank signal. This is why determination of lower limit of detection is one of the parameters that assigned to have a sensitivity for that analytical techniques. Also, the same thing, we have limit of quantification, which is LOQ. So LOQ is the lowest concentration 
can be determined with an acceptable repeatability and trueness. So we can see from the graph that L O Q limit of quantification is different from limit of detection. Why? Because limit of can quantification, it is, it can be repeatable without uh, losing of any precision during uh, uh, the, the reading and the running of the data. Because as you know, as you know, when we are running the, uh, any sample, you have at least run it five times in order to achieve a good precision. Later, I will talk about precision also. So this is why to determine and assign the sensitivity of any technique, you have to find out the lower limit of detection and also the lower limit of quantification. Now, what is the uh, why why the limit of de of detection is important because limit of detection is a crucial factor to determine whether the mole molecule can be identified and quantified so with low limit of detection that is meaning you have high sensitive instrument with low limit of of detection that is meaning you have high sensitive method. This is why in order to assign the sensitivity of your method or your instrument, you have to find out the limit of detection and as well as the limit of quantification. So how we can find it? By simply these two equation. So the limit, the, uh, limit of detection is equal to three multiplied by standard deviation divided by B, which is the slope of calibration curve. While limit of quantification is equal to 10 multiplied by standard deviation divided by the slope of the calibration curve. And of course, the standard deviation here, it is calculated by the standard deviation of the all data response that you have it in the calibration curve. This is how we can determine it. So uh, I want to add another point that uh, we have, of course, sensitivity for a technique as a technique. And also we have a sensitivity for a method as a method itself. How? I will explain it to you. For example, we may use a spectrophotometer I think most of the students, they know what is spectrophotometer. We, you have a source of light and you have a solution in a cell. So when a light passes through the solution, some of the light absorbed by the molecules in the solution. And then some of the light, of course, transmitted through the cell. So the absorbed amount of light is measured and detected through a detector and then will become a signal and we can use it for identification and as well as for quantification. That is meaning using it as a calibration curve to determine the concentration of our analyte. So the sensitivity of spectrophotometer is limited. That is meaning we can know it, it, it's difficult to use spectrophotometer for trace analysis uh, scale. But, but if we use a method, when we say a method, that is meaning the, the reagent, the reaction that we use it during using spectrophotometer, we may increase and enhance the sensitivity of our method, that is meaning the sensitivity of our uh, element or our analyte or our product. So this is why the sensitivity of the method is different from the sensitivity of the instrument. So in enhancing the sensitivity of the method by using selective and good reagent, it may help to enhance and increase the sensitivity of the technique. 
So this is why selectivity, which is the second parameter, is directly related to the sensitivity. How? I will explain it to you. So selectivity, it is the extent that the analyte in a mixture can be determined without effect of interference. Because selectivity showing how much the analyte is detectable regardless the interference that are existed in your matrix or your com or your sample or your uh, uh, component sample so this is why selectivity is related to the sensitivity as well and selectivity has evolved in parallel with the development of more sensitive method this is why the companies the manufacturing companies now they are competing to uh, manufacture high sensitive and high selective technique in parallel together so let us explain more about selectivity how using selective technique will enhance our uh, sensitivity that is meaning we can get a very low detection limit in this case how let's do a comparison between two methods one let's say um, spectrophotometer and the other one is like um, electrochemistry because uh, actually my my phd is in electrochemistry so spectrophotometer as i said before the sensitivity is not that high it's limited this is why we cannot use it in the scale of trace analysis while if you if we if we use electrochemistry like polarography or voltammetry and recently these two techniques being used for pharmaceutical analysis very widely so we we could reach very good low detection of limit as well as high sensitivity. This is why the selectivity will enhance the sensitivity as well. Now, if, if we talk about the selectivity of the method, also will enhance the sensitivity. How? If we use selective reagent, let's say uh, I can give an example, dimethyl glyoxime, Dimethylglyoxime is very selective reagent for chelating the nickel. It can produce a very stable and strong complex with the nickel. So this is why when we use a reagent, a selective reagent, so we enhance the sensitivity. That is meaning we can detect very low concentration of nickel by using a selective reagent reagent this is why using selective method can enhance sensitivity as well now there is a difference between selectivity and specificity what's the difference i will tell you the difference usually when we say specific thing or specific analysis it means this analysis is only for one analyte rather than others. It's only specific to determine or to find the concentration of one analyte. That is meaning this method is only specified for one analyte. But when we say selectivity, it means that selectivity, it means that this method can be used for several analyze regardless the interference that existed within the sample. So this is the, the difference between selectivity and specificity. Of course, selectivity is much better than specificity because it's, it's not even uh, economic uh, uh, and logical to have an instrument only for one to determine only one analyte. So how we can measure selectivity? 
we have uh, uh, different methods. I will only mention one simple method that usually the, the bachelor students, they can use it. First, we are preparing different solution that containing the same amount of the analyte, but variable amounts of interference. Then we plot, of course, we, we may read uh, the, the, the standard, these solutions by using any technique spectrophotometer or other analytical techniques, then we plot the response, that is meaning the signal of the solution against the concentration of the interference. Then we calculate the selectivity coefficient from the curve. How? The selectivity coefficient is equal to the response to interference divided by the response to the analyte. And this can be determined from the slope of the calibration that we did it. This is how we can determine the selectivity of each technique and each method we are using it. And of course, as I said, selectivity is directly related to the sensitivity because whenever we have high selective method, high selective technique, we will have high sensitive method and high sensitive technique. The other parameters is about precision and accuracy. And some students, they get confused between the precision and accuracy. Actually, they are quite different, but both of them, they, they are important while we are doing analysis for our samples. So this is why I will explain it to you. Accuracy, if we define accuracy, it means the closeness of your measured value to the true value or known value. That is meaning how much your data is close to the true value. This is accuracy. Let's say if you have a weight measurement of 3.2 kilogram for a given substance, but the actual or true value is 10 kilogram. Therefore, your method or your measurement is not accurate. But precision is different from accuracy. Precision, it means the closeness of your data and result from the average data. That is meaning it is refers to the closeness of your data from each other. Let's say if you weigh a given substance five times and you get in these five times 3.2 kg each time. So that is meaning your measurement is very precise. And I show you by this image that how there is a, a huge difference between precision and accuracy. So let us talk about the first image from the left side. So the first image, you can see these data the, in the blue color are near each other. They are very close to each other. While the true value is in the center. So that is meaning you have low accuracy, but you have good precision. The second image from the left side you can see the data here, it's almost in the center of the image, but they are far somehow from each other. So this indicates that you have high accuracy, but low precision. The third one, the third image from the left, we can see that the data are neither far from each other, nor not in the center. So this is why both accuracy and precision are low. The last one, we can see that the data are close to each other and also in the, in the center. That is meaning it has high accuracy and high precision. And if you ask me which one is more preferable in the analysis, I should say both. We cannot 
um, we cannot ignore accuracy to get precision, and we cannot ignore precision to get accuracy. Because as I said, accuracy, it means the error. How much relative error do you have? But precision, it's about repeatability, how much uh, reproducibility, how much your data is reprod reproducible while you are running it at least five times. So this is why the good analytical techniques that you should choose, you should have both moderately high accuracy and also a good precision as well as. So regarding the accuracy, how we can determine it, accuracy, it means the relative error or percentage error, it's equal to your result, that is meaning the observed value, minus the acceptable value. Acceptable value, sometimes it's theoretical value if we cannot get the true value. Sometimes we can calculate it theoretically. So this is why minus acceptable value divided by acceptable value multiplied by 100. If, if you get uh, uh, the result in negative, that is meaning your experimental value is too low. And if you get your accuracy result in a positive number, that is meaning your result is too high. And usually, uh, in instrumental method, the relative error, the acceptable relative error is less than one percentage. That is meaning more than one percentage, it's not acceptable. Your accuracy will be low. While precision is determined statistically by uh, applying the equation of standard deviation. So you can see the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the summation of xi minus x dash, which is the average of your data, and to the power 2 divided by n minus 1. N is the number of repeating your data for the same data. That is meaning each sample, at least, you have to run it for five times. This is how you can find out the standard deviation. And of course, if the standard deviation is equal to one, that is meaning the results are found within one. So this is why usually we are writing the mean value plus minus one standard deviation. But if the standard deviation is two, so that is meaning the mean value is plus minus two standard deviation. That is meaning the mean of your results are within two standard deviation away. So what is the relation between standard deviation and accuracy? This is a question. Of course, there is no relation. There is no relation between standard deviation and accuracy because sometimes in some techniques you can find uh, um, a good accuracy, high accuracy, while the standard deviation is poor and also vice versa. In some techniques, you can get good standard deviation, good precision, while the accuracy is low. This is why, as I said, you should very, uh, you should be very concentrated and focusing on the analytical techniques that have both value for regarding the accuracy and the precision as well. So usually in the pharmaceutical analytical techniques, we have two methods. We have manual method, that is meaning without uh, just, just a person with the glassworks without using any instrument. And also we have instrumentation method. Usually for the manual method, the acceptable accuracy should not exceed five percentage. While in the instrumentation method, the relative error or the accuracy 
should not exceed one percentage. Now, we are talking about the analytical techniques and the, the, the types of analytical techniques that we have used. Of course, recently, so many techniques been, uh, been established and even been built in order to get, as I said, high sensitivity, high selectivity, good precision, and high accuracy. So starting with the simplest one is titrometric or volumetric technique, then gravimetric methods, then chromatography with all the types of chromatography that we have it, spectrophotometric techniques, and also electrochemical method, kinetic method for analysis, electrophoretic method, flow injection and sequential injection analysis, and hyphenated techniques. So I will start with the simplest one, which is titrometric techniques. Although it is very old method in the middle of 18th century, they uh, established and they innovated this, uh, this technique, but still we are using titrometric me method. And nowadays the companies, they, uh, they established the automatic titrometric method, automatic titration. So this is uh, why the, the sensitivity and also the selectivity of titrometric technique is not that good. They have poor selectivity and also they don't have good sensitivity. But recently they did some uh, modernization by using it for non-aqueous titration method and also expanding the application for very weak acid and bases, as well as detecting the endpoint in order to improving the precision. This will add some advantage uh, for this technique. But in spite of that, there are other advantage associated with the, these methods include saving time and labor, high precision, and also uh, there is no need for using reference standards. The low cost of these techniques make it very versatile and usable, especially uh, when we are using it for bachelor students. The second technique, which is very wide techniques uh, in use is chromatographic technique. Also chromatographic techniques is somehow all technique, but uh, uh, starting from the column uh, chromatography, then thin layer chromatography and HPLC, which is widely used for pharmaceutical analysis. And of course, the specificity of HPLC method is very excellent and simultaneously sufficient precision. And also it is very versatile in pharmaceutical companies. Spectroscopic technique. So spectroscopic technique, the advantage of these techniques are low time, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> low time and labor consumption. And of course, as you may know, that spectroscopic technique, it has low sensitivity and low selectivity. But if we use selective method, we can enhance the sensitivity and the selectivity of these techniques. Electro -techni electrochemical techniques. Recently, electrochemical techniques been used widely for determination of pharmaceutical drugs. And actually, there are so many advantages within electrochemical techniques. One of the advantage is that we can use very trace amount like microliter by using these techniques. Plus, it has high sensitivity and also uh, these techniques are very eco-friendly and the, 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 the residual are not toxic and uh, environmentally uh, uh, good 
and not toxic for the environment. This is why electrochemical techniques being used recently for pharmaceutical analysis and also it's take very small space in the lab. This is also other advantage besides these advantages. So electrophoretic technique is also one of the high sensitive technique and uh, it can be performed on a quicker time scale, requires small amount like nanoliter injection volumes and being widely used for pharmaceutical application, especially for uh, detection of uh, separation of uh, proteins. Flow injection analysis is one of the techniques that being used also for pharmaceutical analysis. Actually, this technique is, uh, uh, is very versatile technique and applicable because uh, it can be used for quality control section uh, as you can use it for so many sample at the same time, like multi-sampler. So also it consume less amount of sample, less amount of reagent, and it needs less time for detecting and for running the, your sample. But the only uh, problem within it is the moderate sensitivity of this kind of technique. So uh, these mainly, most of the analytical techniques that being used in pharmaceutical analysis and the uh, recently the hyphenated techniques are most attractive techniques because they combined two different techniques together. For example, they combined HPLC with uh, mass spectroscopy. And these techniques become more attractive for the researcher to use it. Why? Because it will give you the opportunity to have two application in one application as well, like separation and also detection at the same time. So this is why these techniques, uh, uh, they have different sensitivity, different selectivity, different accuracy and precision. So in order to choose and to uh, have the accurate technique for your analysis, you have to consider these four parameters of analyticals. Uh, I guess this is the last slide. So thank you for listening and I'm ready for any question. Thank you. Thank you very much, doctor. Yes, I can hear you, doctor. Yeah, good question, doctor. Of course, uh, when you choose a technique, first of all, you should know in which skill you are doing your analysis. As I said before, we have different scale, like size of the sample. Is it in the scale of micro or macro 
or trace analysis because each technique has different sensitivity. Therefore, if, if you are using, for example, if you want to, uh, to have your analysis in trace analysis scale, you cannot use spectrophotometer technique. So this is why the first thing is to consider the scale of your analysis, in which scale you are analyzing your component. The second thing is which method give you highest accuracy and precision and good precision in order to do this analysis. So these two parameters, these two factors are very important to select the technique. Okay, madam. Accuracy is important in all character, all the time, madam. Because yes. uh, if you want to analyze a compound, uh, for basic studies, IR is sufficient. Uh, but I... Uh, in the model, MS is more like you see compared to IR, madam. So, yes. the cost yes. is also an important factor, madam. Or, uh, because I will tell you why accuracy is important. Because accuracy is related to selectivity. If you have selective method, so your uh, accuracy, that is meaning your relative error, will be low for sure. So, this is why accuracy is related to selectivity. Let's say if we compare atomic absorption technique and inductively coupled plasma. Why inductively coupled plasma is more, uh, is, is more sensitive than, than, uh, than atomic absorption? Because the accuracy, the relative error in inductively coupled plasma is less than the atomic absorption spectroscopy. This is why the accuracy is related to sensitivity and also to selectivity as well. So whenever you have high accuracy, that is meaning you have high sensitivity. Thank you, madam. Welcome. Yes, madam. Uh, uh, if you have found a compound, madam. Yes. So you have suggested a compound and uh, we don't know the idea of what will be the uh, that uh, expected uh, output, madam. So during that time, what kind of uh, analytical method you choose, madam, to find out the number? Yeah. For this is, you have to look at the techniques for qualitative analysis in this case. Because mm, all the techniques, let's say, not all the techniques are used for qualitative and quantitative at the same time. So this is why first you should consider if you don't know that sample and uh, you want first to identify the sample. So you have first to look at the qualitative analysis technique. And the most important qualitative analysis technique for pharmaceutical products is of course HPLC. And you may also need to do some chromatographic technique to separate the analyze later. So this is why you have to consider the techniques that are uh, very sensitive, very selective in order to get good result. So we have different techniques for qualitative and we have different techniques for quantitative. Uh, thank you, madam. Welcome. Any questions? Any questions? Madam, the, uh, the quantity of compound uh, plays a major role in the selection of uh, uh, technique. What are you going to use, madam? Uh, excuse me, can you repeat the question, please? That the amount of compound, whatever you're having, uh, is going to be play a role in uh, selection of analytical method, madam? Yes. Yes. The amount of sample that you are using. Let's say... How it will... Uh, uh, wait, okay. Let's say, for example, usually 
uh, when we prepared organic compounds, we are not um, getting a high percentage of product. Usually it's like this. This is why in order to, to have a pure organic compounds, this, the student should do column chromatography. Sometimes they do it like 20 times, 30 times in order just get small yield of the organic compound. So in this case, the, quan the, the, the quantity is, is uh, depend, how it's depend. If you have low quantity of that compound, so in this case, you should use very high sensitive and selective technique in order to determine it. If your sample or your, your yield is high, that is meaning you can use it in, in a high concentration, high quantity, in this case, we can use other techniques that does not need uh, uh, like uh, th that are not working in the trace analysis field. This is what I mean. Is it your question? Yes, madam. And uh, what about the physical state, madam? Uh, most of the compounds are solid in nature and uh, very few of them are uh, liquid or gaseous in nature. So in the case <laughs> of uh, a liquid or gaseous sample, what kind of method you will choose, madam? Yeah. For liquids, I think we have so many techniques that uh, we can use uh, liquid uh, as a sample because uh, even uh, in atomic absorption and in inductively coupled plasma, uh, the, the, if we have a solid sample, we should dissolve it in a solution, in a solvent, then use it. But, but, but regarding the gas state, yes, not all the technique can be used uh, in a gaseous state. Uh, unfortunately, we have just few techniques that have been used for gaseous state. Most of the techniques that we have it in analyticals are using the sample as a solution. That is meaning even if you have a solid, you may dissolve it in solvent. But recently, uh, they, they, uh, they established also like, um, like uh, IR for, for solution also. And uh, they, they did, uh, uh, they did uh, other techniques for solid uh, state like spectrophotometer, but uh, uh, they, they use it uh, for solid uh, sample also. So this is why for liquid, we don't have problem. The only one is gaseous state, just few techniques being used uh, for uh, determination of uh, gas sample. <coughs> Thank you, madam. Welcome. Any other questions? Thank you, Professor Dr. Tara, madam. Thank you very much for your wonderful presentation. We had an informative presentation, madam. Dr. Tara, madam. Thank you very much. On behalf of our uh,